I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. Okay, so maybe you can tell from my uh, deluxe surf bag here that <clears throat> this was somewhat of an unplanned trip. Uh, I've written many times that when bunker are in the area and the water gets rough enough to, to dirty up, the first day that it clears, just as it's clearing, that's an excellent time to find bunker along the beach. Now this is Labor Day, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, just absolutely gorgeous weather. Not typical time that you expect to find um, stripers and decent blues along the beach, but uh, again, under these conditions, um, you know, things are set up for this. Now, what I really like about this video is that I can show the watercolor so beautifully. You can see it um, dirty on the inside, but half a cast out, you can see the mud line. And on that mud line and beyond it, uh, hopefully you can see those bunker schools which are frequently exploding from blues and bass underneath. Now I live a couple miles from here and when I had looked at the water, oh, it was mud for a long way out. But I knew that um, in, in some areas it would be clearing. So I actually was going to the grocery store and said, well, let me just have something in the car just in case. So I threw in this rod that um, had been in the boat actually. And that yellow bag that had some bunker stuff in there and uh, yep that paid off and in case you missed it all I did was uh, throw the snag hook out in the bunker school take a swing snag a bunker and let it swim for a bit it's called snag and drop it's probably about my least favorite way to fish uh, however I also know that in a situation like this it's gonna be next to impossible to catch these fish on plugs, bucktails, whatever, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate that later in this video. Um, you know, sometimes it works, many times it doesn't. Um, so in this case, I decide, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and throw a snag hook in, partially because I wanted to see what was there, what was underneath these bunker schools. Now the reason that uh, the bunker are drawn to this kind of water is that they, um, a major portion of their diet is dead organic matter. So when you stir the water up like this, when it's really dirty, there's a lot of sand and silt mixed in, and you typically I'm not finding the bunker um, in those waters. It probably irritates their gills because they're filter feeders. But as the water settles out and begins to clear, uh, a lot of that heavier stuff settles out. The dead organic, organic matter stays suspended, and that gives the bunker a food source. And, uh, you know, the way I look at it, the goal of a bunker in life is to not get eaten by something, but you know, they also have to eat. They, they have nutritional requirements as well, so uh, they're going to seek out these kinds of waters. Okay, and here you can see they're even a little closer. They're right on the mud line. They're showing up pretty well there. Um, yeah, just snag it, let it swim, um, keep some tension on it. I am by no means an expert on snag and drop. Uh, these I probably got 150 videos on my channel. I think this is the third time I'm, I'm showing this. It's not something I do often, but it is pretty mindless. I mean, now you've got an injured bunker on there and when you're in a boat a typical thing is you might retrieve that bunker and put it on a, a single hook and let it swim but you know here off the beach you, you need to stay where the fish are so and there we go something grabbed it and hooked up again and this isn't really a, a surf rod this is a seven foot uh, tsunami classic spin uh, it's the H model so I believe that's rated 12 to 25 pound test line uh, yeah, actually does a pretty good job on the beach uh, and in the boat. And the reel is a Penn uh, 4500 Slammer 3. So 
I went back to the beach after dinner, and this time I brought real equipment. I've got my surf rod, surf bag, you know, plugs, bucktails, you name it. And I did not want to deal with snagging bunker. I, I wanted to catch them correctly and uh, on plugs or whatever. And oh my goodness, it's just complete mayhem. It's an all-out adult bunker blitz. I hope that this is showing up on the video because from about maybe two-thirds of a cast out, maybe half a cast at this point, uh, I've got bunker all over the place and it's blowing up. Uh, I've got, you can see big bluefish flying out of the water, bunker flying out of the water. And when it's this intense, uh, normally I, I can get these fish on plugs, on bucktails. I tried both. I worked everything through these. And it, it's why at some point, uh, you know, you might just put a snag hook on and want to catch a fish because, boy, I, I just couldn't get a hit. They would not hit. They were so keyed on the bunker. That's all they wanted, uh, even though they were feeding intensely. And that's the way it is sometimes when they're on adult bunker. And I'll leave you with a nice scene of these fish in real close to the beach. Uh, but it didn't matter. Uh, poppers, swimmers, bucktails, the only thing those fish would respond to was um, a foul hook bunker. And that's just the way it is, I guess. All right. I hope you found this interesting. And again, uh, look for that dirty water. Look for that day. The first day it starts clearing up. And if you've got bunker and fish in the area... Uh, you might not run into this level of activity, but there's a good chance you'll find fish.